So, have you thought things through? Hmm? Go ahead, speak your mind. <laughs> There's no need to be so formal. You helped us defeat that big fella anyway. Plus, if we keep making pleasantries, we'll waste a whole day. You've done me a huge favor by defending the space station from the Antimatter Legion. And know that while Herta may not admit it, she owes me one. She won't refuse me if I ask for a favor in return. And it's probably not too much to ask for a rare item from the space station, right? How about we continue talking on the express? I'll make you a cup of coffee. My special blend. <laughs> I was ready ages ago. I've been here so many times before. It should have just been an ordinary trip for me. But everything's not so ordinary anymore, is it? Walking the same path over and over will never be the same. There will always be something new. That's the meaning of trailblazing. As always, to follow in the footsteps of Akivili. Sometimes we stop on other worlds and we'll continue to do so. There are countless next stops in the galaxy. I love the vast reaches of space, and the Express does too. I want to seek out new worlds, and the Express wants to return to its former path. Because you're different. Well, that might be the biggest reason. It's not the only one. I think you need a chance. A chance to discover just how different you really are from everyone else. Everybody keeps telling you how special you are and how you have a Stellaron inside you. But that's already plain as day to you. And no matter who tells you, be it me or Herta or anybody, it's not the same thing as feeling it yourself. You have to experience enough to know if you've gained or lost anything because of the Stellaron, and to know who you really are. Learn to control the Stellaron, and then you can control your destiny. The Stellaron might still be an enigma, but the fact of the matter is, it's a part of you. And you have to embrace this before you can move forward into the future. So, have you thought things through? Then come with me. Founded. Yes, Pom Pom's talking to you. Himiko told Pom Pom about your situation. Now listen up. Pom Pom will only say this once. Pom Pom's sure there have been lots of people telling you how special you are lately. But this is the Astral Express, and everyone on here has their secrets. Since you chose to board, you can abide by the rules. You're not the only special one here. You'd best remember that. I'm Pom Pom, the conductor. Just come find me if you have any trouble. We will see. Come with me, take the journey. you. How do you feel? Tasteful. Oh, you mean the train. 
I was uh, asking how you felt physically. You are right, though. Looking at the interior decoration, you can tell trailblazers have quite good taste. In any case, I have to thank you for saving March. <laughs> All I did was calm that thing inside you down temporarily. I don't want to frighten you, but the truth is you won't ever be in the clear while it's still inside your body. However, as long as the Stellaron is still in your body, you should be careful what you do. I don't know if Himiko and I can suppress it again. But I won't bore you any longer. So much happened at the space station, you must be tired. There should be some time until the next warp jump, so feel free to walk around and familiarize yourself with the environment. What do you think? Does the Astral Express look the same as you imagined? Everyone on the Express is a passenger. We're all heading towards an unknown destination, like we're traveling together. Maybe that's why the Trailblaze chose such a look. Oh, right. March and Don Hung should both be in their rooms right now. You can go look for them. You youngsters should get along well. We usually meet up here, but our personal cabins are in the next carriage. Also, don't mind Pom Pom's antics. They're actually pretty interested in you. It's just that... We haven't had new passengers on the Express for a long while. All right, I won't steal Pom Pom's thunder. If you have any questions, just go ask our conductor. Himiko likes using the phonograph a lot. She says it can play melodies from the past. Welt likes collecting these jet black discs. It seems like they could be antiques. He'd be very happy if you could bring a few back. Here already? Hmm. I was just engaging in pleasantries. How can I help? You recognize this as well? Uh, Himako always likes to bring back weird junk and try to fix it. That also got modified a bit. Oh? Why are you interested in her room? remembers Himiko saying that you saved her. Mmm, very brave. Very foolhardy. But that is what a trailblazer should be like. March 7th's room is in the express sleeper compartment. She's always running around, so she might not be there. Don Hong's room? Oh, you mean the archives. Uh, he's just sort of living in there, I guess. I can't be bothered getting him out. March 7th's room is right next to the archives. You can visit him on the way. Pom Pom still needs to prepare for the Express's warp jump. You can look around the place yourself. No matter where you go on this train, Pom Pom will always have my eyes on you.
Something there seems to be the sound of electronic equipment. <laughs> Who's there? I learned to sense incoming visitors after people kept barging in so frequently. Can I help you? Feel free. This is open to everyone on the Express. While many of the roads that Akivili traveled along no longer exist, I think it's still meaningful to record our adventures as current passengers of the Express. I enter the collected data into the Archives data bank. I try to catalog the people and places the Express encounters, and compare and contrast them with the existing records. Do you see the terminal over there? It can be used to view information already stored in the data bank. Do give it a go. Rand, heir to Bellabog's supreme guardian and acting commander of the Silvermane... <sighs> Apologies, I'm used to introducing myself like that. You can call me Branya. is unlocked. Should I go in? Just one look should be fine, right? I won't regret. Read.
Attention all passengers. Attention all passengers. The express is about to conduct a warp jump. All passengers, please gather at the main hall. I repeat, the express is about to conduct a warp jump. All passengers, please gather at the main hall. excitement, right? I'll be uh, you're just like Mr. Yang, always worrying about things that haven't even happened yet. Young people should be energetic. Here, let's do some relaxation exercises. The first step is to grab a hold of the root cause of your anxiety. Well, it is a little abstract. But, basically, you just need to pinpoint what's bothering you. The second step is to focus all your anxiety on that point. Seems like you're a natural. It's not easy to reach this level of enlightenment. Now for step three. Yank out that anxiety and cast it away with all your might! That doesn't mean it won't work. The best method for relieving anxiety is the one that works, right? What's wrong? <laughs> you look like you were about to say something. Oh, I think I know what you're going to ask. You've come to the right person. Trailblaze is our mission, and the source of strength that powers the Express to travel across the galaxy. Explore the unknown world to continue our journey ahead. Understand the local culture and immerse ourselves within it. Establish a connection with the new world, rejoice with it, and share in its fears. Connect worlds together, carving an endless path. The, <laughs> the galaxy is endlessly vast. I wouldn't know where to begin, especially when you ask me like that so suddenly. <laughs> I've been to many different worlds, yet I still know very little about the galaxy, simply because it's too vast. As for its nature, there are a few theories that I can share with you. The most popular is probably the Cosmos Tree Theory, proposed by Xandar, emanator of erudition and the first member of the Genius Society. He compared the galaxy to an enormous imaginary tree, with its leaves being individual universes. Therefore, only eons who draw their energy from the imaginary, and emanators who are blessed by eons, can travel through the spaces filled with imaginary energy. That's why planets where civilizations exist are so similar. However, the theory has its flaws. Elias Salas, the 56th member of the Genius Society, invented remote detection, disproving that the imaginary is unique. This shook the foundation of the cosmos tree theory. There are other theories as well. The stretching theory, the heat torch theory, and the parallel imaging theory. The Riddlers claim the galaxy is just a dream, and IX's followers seem to like that claim. I'll be <laughs> I've been to many different- The most pop- Therefore, however, there are other theories as well. Eons are the most mysterious beings in the galaxy. All we know 
is that they ascended from the form of intelligent beings. As for the how and why, even the geniuses over at the Genius Society haven't the slightest clue. Upon ascending to Eonhood, that being gains power over the paths, free to choose the allocation of imaginary energy however they wish, while suffering the restrictions of the Primum Mobile. The Eon of Destruction seeks only to destroy the universe, while the Eon of Erudition wants to find the answer for all that exists. Meanwhile, the Eon of Preservation continues to forge walls, and the Eon of Enigmata devotes itself to obscuring all that is known. A cloud of mystery shrouds the Eons. I heard Madame Herta recruited a team to try and solve the mysteries about them. Compared to the eons, the factions are much easier to understand. Mortals with the same objective gather together to practice their understanding of eons and paths. Many eons are unreachable, but the factions are close to us. After Akivili trailblazed across the galaxy, people became aware of the existence of other worlds. Gradually, more people started trying to use the power of the eons to travel between worlds. The Interastral Peace Corporation is a good example. They worship Klopoth, the Eon of Preservation, but somehow became the largest economic entity in the galaxy. Another example is the Genius Society. There are no shortages of eccentrics like Madame Herda who dedicate themselves to scientific research under the protection of the erudition. These factions possess the same power as us to voyage between worlds. It would be hard to travel through the galaxy without them. The birth of an eon gives rise to a path. The nature of the paths remains a mystery, leaving us to draw an analogy in a way that mortals can understand. It's a philosophical concept of sorts. A person is considered to be on a path when their will overlaps with that path. If the person has a strong enough will, they can draw power from that path. Those who can do so are called path striders. Path striders possess extraordinary power, but are still insignificant compared to the eons, like a drop of water in a vast ocean. Sometimes eons will bestow a mortal with their power, making them an emanator of that eon. I should mention that once a path is open, it cannot be closed, even with the fall of its eon. That is how we are still able to travel across the stars, despite Akivili's passing. Ooh, you want to know more about the Express? I'm glad. After all, it's an important companion of ours. The Astral Express was a tool created by Akivili the Trailblaze, who used it to transport themselves and the Nameless across the galaxy. It is rumored that there are other vehicles like it, but the Express has no such records. When I found the Express, its memory had been severely damaged, with much of its valuable information lost. All I know is that the Express is an aspect of creation built by Akivili themselves and used to travel the cosmos. As for how it was built and how it was damaged, I do not have an answer. The Express is traveling on a route that the Trailblaze once embarked on. The names of some destinations have been lost, but the first and final stops were both at Pagana, Akivili's home world. We speculate the Astral Express started its journey from Pagana, stopping at each destination along the way before returning there for its next journey. However, the appearance of the Stellaron has caused a delay at each stop. There's a legend in the galaxy. The heart of Akivili themselves lies in the core of the Astral Express, providing it with the power to travel between worlds. But I found no evidence of that aboard the Express. Besides, the Express existed before the Trailblaze fell. There's no way they could have had two hearts, right? However, it is likely that the Express possesses some sort of mechanism to transfer power from the Trailblaze. It wouldn't be possible with a normal Path Strider. 
The Fallen Eon, Deceased Trailblaze. Their passing is still a mystery, but of all the known eons, Akivili was the closest to mankind. In the data bank aboard the Express, it is recorded that they walked among the mortals, adventuring, fighting, and celebrating with them. Although they were an eon restrained by the Prima Mobile, Akivili enjoyed a freedom similar to us mortals. They were different from most. But their passing came so suddenly that it was thought they were killed by another eon. I don't believe that to be the case. This is your first time experiencing the warp jump, so a little discomfort is unavoidable. If you're really anxious about it, I can stay here and have a chat with you. About everyone on the Express? Who would you like to know about? <laughs> She's the owner of the Express. We joke around calling Pom Pom the conductor, but Everyone knows Himiko is the boss. It all started with her encounter with the Astral Express, and they haven't been apart since then. She's extremely passionate, like a, a burning sun. However, she remains mysterious most of the time. Once in a while, you feel that she's burning herself out trying to accomplish her dream. Only someone like her is worthy of the Astral Express. I think Himiko's vision of her whole life revolves around uh, a very important dream. To be honest, I don't know when Pom Pom appeared. Uh, I think it was before I came to the Express. No, wait, maybe it was after. Pom Pom is like the spirit of the Astral Express. Whenever anyone on the Express needs help, they will appear immediately. It would be ill-advised to underestimate them. Pom Pom is terrifying when they get angry. Yes, it's terrifying. Dan Hung is a lonely child. He may appear distant and cold, but his heart is kind. Perhaps he's the way he is today because he spent so much time on the run. Sometimes he reminds me of myself when I was young. He used to work at the Xianzhou. We don't know what he's running from. He once told me that he didn't know either. All he knew was that something was chasing him and that he had to run. So he boarded the ship of a troop called the Morning Actors and escaped the IPC. After a while, he made his way to the Express, and he's stayed here longer than anywhere else. Don't worry. No matter who or what wants to hurt Don Hung, we won't let them. Those who dare attack members of the Astral Express should be prepared to suffer the wrath of me and Himiko. Did Himiko tell you about March 7th? Uh, she was trapped in ice, floating through space. We happened upon her and rescued her. It was a unique type of ice known as six-phase ice, a substance that adheres to imaginary law, meaning that external forces cannot change its form. Whoever sealed her inside the six-phase ice, no matter who it is, did so either to protect her or banish her. I believe she had been floating through space for some time. It's impossible to trace the origins of this phenomenon. When it's observed by humans, or should I say, once it begins to affect the physical world, it's already too late to reverse. It's like a sudden storm that appears on a calm ocean. This phenomenon causes the smooth journey through the expanse to be filled with dangers. The mechanism whereby this mutation and corrosion spreads is the Stellarons. 
It promulgated rapidly, like cancer cells. So the International Peace Corporation named it the cancer of all worlds. They are the army ruled by the eon of destruction, Nanook. As Nanook's followers, they stand against all life and civilization and execute the will of destruction, disseminating chaos and calamity. Their actions cannot be explained by reason because their only motivation and purpose is to destroy. Fragmentums are a phenomenon of corrosion. The mainstream school of thought is that stellarons catalyzed the appearance of fragmentums. All matter and space that comes into contact with the fragmentum will be turned into fragmentum creations. However, you don't have to feel too burdened. At the very least, the current state of the stellaron in your body is very stable and will not cause distortion to the outside. So just leave him be. Oh yeah, take these. A tiny bonus from the conductor to the passenger. Think of it as an investment in your future growth. like that before but it wasn't stars for me though it was lights when I first woke up after being rescued from the ice I could see clusters of stars in front of me I reached out for them automatically but they turned out to be the carriage ceiling lights the whole crew was watching me it was pretty embarrassing I forgot to tell you. Before all this, I was stuck in a huge block of ice drifting through space. Come with me. Himeko and Mr. Yang and who was it again? Anyway, 
They figured out a way to melt the ice and saved me. Come with me, take the Who knows? I don't remember anything before that. Who I am, where I'm from, my name. It's like everything was erased from my mind. March 7th was the day they found me, so it stuck. Ever since then, I've been hanging out on this train and following it to whatever destination it decides to stop at. I'm hoping that one day, I can find my past. Uh, what am I talking about this for? A way to get everyone down, huh? It's fine. I was the one who brought it up. <laughs> Cheer up! It's not every day someone gets to ride on the Astral Express. Ah, here comes the conductor. The Express has reached a safe distance from the space station. We'll be jumping in about 10 minutes. Return to your seats, please. Both of you! Things could get bumpy. Uh, thanks, Pom Pom. But did you really have to come and remind me? I'm not a newbie, you know. Well, it wouldn't be necessary, but Miss March 7th likes to challenge herself and falls over every time. That's just called never giving up. <laughs> to celebrate. Conductor, can I get a juice, please? Thank you. Till we uh, we're jumping in five minutes. You can have something to drink when it's over. To celebrate. But I'm thirsty now. Jumps are like this. They may feel novel the first few times, but you'll slowly get used to them after a few more. As for the mechanism, well, if you're interested, I'll explain it to you in detail when we have more time. For now, just sit and wait. Remember to close your eyes. It helps with the dizziness. Our next stop is a small planet called Eurelo 6. It's been thousands of years since the last time the Express paid a visit. The databank shows it was a lush and beautiful place. But after all this time, it's possible that dramatic changes have occurred. Oh, don't worry about me. I just want to see if I can stay on my feet this time. It's fine. I'm sturdier than I look. Besides, the ice will protect me. When I'm in danger, I instinctively create ice to protect myself. Though, sometimes falling on the ice actually hurts more than falling on the ground. Well, don't mind me. Find a place to sit down and buckle up. Hello? Hello, hello? <clears throat> All passengers, please return to your seats. The train is about to make the jump. Hold on, everyone. I won't fall over. I won't fall over. I won't fall over. Five, four, three, two, one. Eurelo 6 has become? Uh-huh. So, that snowy planet is our destination this time? Yes. Looks like this trailblazing expedition won't be easy. Oh, spatial readout anomaly. Star rail stability is down to 12%. Schedule alteration. Seven-day stopover time extended indefinitely. Indefinitely. Until the anomaly is removed. Take an ordinary train as an example. It's like the tracks up ahead have suddenly snapped, and the way forward leads straight into a collapsing abyss. The only sensible thing to do would be to break hard, right? If we try to force our way ahead, 
There could be a hefty price to pay. This again? Don't tell me. It's gotta be. The results of the preliminary analysis are here. The anomaly stems from a stellar run, as always. Yes, just like the one that's been placed into your body. Stellarons are clouded in mystery. Even Herda isn't able to fully understand them. But there's no need to worry. This isn't the first time our route has been obstructed by a Stellaron. Even if we don't know much about them, at least we know how to neutralize their influences. The only thing we can say for sure is that their arrival causes massive changes to civilizations and ecosystems. They also generate distortions in space, such as fragmentums. There must be an inextricable connection between the Stellaron we're dealing with here and Eurelo 6 becoming a frozen planet. Our current theory is that Stellarons are seeds of disaster, planted by a certain eon throughout the universe. We can't continue to trailblaze without removing the source of the disaster. It's empowering, looking out at a world from a window like this. But when you set foot on the planet itself, you realize how small and helpless you really are. Just like them. I'd like to entrust this trailblazing expedition to March, Dan Hung, and you. The objective is clear. Find the Stellaron responsible for the disaster and the spatial distortions, and bring it back to the Express. We'll deal with the rest. Awesome! We get to work as a team again! Come with me, take the journey on. Someone has to stay on the train or Pom Pom will get lonely. Not to mention, Nanook threw us a glance just now. If we're targeted by the Antimatter Legion, then things could go south fast. So it's still not our turn. I know you really want to go, but we should give the youngsters a chance to get out there on their own. It'll be a good opportunity for them to bond. March, if you two are ready, why not go and find Dan Hung? He's probably already started collating the ecological data and survey results for your Relo 6. It's always good to know more about the destination before you start a journey. Ever since the destruction sowed Stellarons across the universe, many worlds have changed. Nanook, the destruction, Yausha, the abundance, Terminus, the finality. I've seen and learned a lot in my time, but I still struggle to understand some of the Eon's actions. Thanks to a brilliant performance, you guys saved the space station from a moment of crisis. Now, the Express is relying on you to get it moving again. Remember, there are four things we do when we arrive at a new world. Explore, understand, establish, and connect. And I'm sure you'll get along really well with March and Dan Hung. Each stop brings its own grand and exciting adventure. To celebrate. No. Pom Pom can't leave the train right now. Oh, Pom Pom's so dejected all of a sudden. A planet covered in snow and ice. Will I find my answer here? Whoa! <sighs> Don't sneak up on me like that! Why are you still here? Go find Don Hung! Exciting adventures are waiting for us! Are you doing okay after your first jump? Dizziness or retching are normal reactions. 
He'll feel better once you get used to it. I enjoy being alone, especially when I have important work to do. I went through the Express's database, and it seems the environment on Urelo 6 has undergone drastic changes in the past few centuries. It was not a frozen planet to begin with. He said so? Hmm. Considering the spatial obstacles that the Star Rail has encountered, it's highly possible. I've conducted a preliminary survey and found that there's one area with a relatively normal temperature on the surface of the planet. By normal, I mean a temperature that just about allows for human survival. If I had to choose a site for initial investigation on this trailblazing expedition, that would be it. As I expected, before you came, whenever March wanted to go anywhere, Himiko would make Mr. Yang and me go with her. And even after you arrived, I didn't suppose I'd be the one to be liberated of that duty. I assume the trailblazing objective this time is to find the Stellaron on Urelo 6 and dispel the effect it's exerting on the Star Rail. Right? I see. You should find March. I'll join you two once I'm ready. Did you talk to Don Hung? How'd it go? Really? I find that hard to believe. Relax. Don Hung and I are experienced trailblazers. We got your back. Well, are you ready? When I first saw this planet, I thought a world covered in ice. Could it have something to do with my past? Now I can't stop thinking about it. Still, the ice that trapped me was six-phased ice, a very rare substance. I don't think you can find it on your average planet. To be honest, I think I'd be kind of annoyed if I found out this was my home world. It looks freezing. Pretty girls aren't frost resistant. What? Is there something on my face? Nah, I was just imagining all the fun we're gonna have here. <laughs> hmm. I feel sorry for this world. First the Stellaron, and now you. Come with me, take the journey. All right, here comes the Urelo 6 Trailblaze team. Urelo 6, we're here. <sighs> it really is one big snowball. Well, the Trailblaze path grants us faint power. It allows us to better adapt to harsh environments. <sighs> Snow as far as the eye can see. Which direction should we take? Based on the coordinates, the target should be up ahead. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go! Hmm... Do you want to mention the time we smashed a hole through Tykean Stadium? Or shall I? Oh, please stop bringing that up. Let's just say that landings and crowds don't mix. Unless you enjoy trailblazing through two weeks of community service. I said drop it! Remember, we should stay vigilant. We know very little about this world. Calm down. Between the three of us, nothing will stand in our way. I mean, come on. You've got a Stellaron in your body. I have my special six-phased ice powers. And Don Hung... Uh, he's got that mysterious past thing going for him. So if people start creating trouble for us, they're going to regret it.
Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> let's go. Braving the unknown? That's the real spirit of trailblazing. This place still hasn't been corroded, yet Fragmenta monsters have already made it here. I fear the Stellaron may be exerting a significant influence on this world. for you. You won't get away. Fighting is meaningless. I have something for you. You won't get away. My turn. Let's go. No interest in conflict. You won't get away. Time for an overhaul. Ha! Tough luck running into me! You won't get away. The truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision! Break! You won't get away. Get away. Gotta try hard sometimes. Watch this awesome move. Too late to repent. Perhaps you still don't understand. Humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. buried in the snowfall. Huh? So these are rooftops? How long would snow have to fall to get this thick? A long, long time. Reach the end of the story in your own way. Hey, get 
get out of there or you'll shiver to death. <laughs> Holding your breath won't help. I got this, March. Uh, someone's got their head stuck in the sand. Or the snow in this case. They just need a helping hand. Ouch! My fine fellow, was that really necessary? Is crawling around in the snow a crime these days? I mean, come on, surely. It doesn't warrant a spearing. But then again, how can I blame you? I mean, I caught you off guard. It, it had to happen. You could even say I deserved it, huh? Besides, I made a gallant group of new friends as a result. <laughs> Is Captain Jepard around? Uh, he, he's an old buddy of mine. Who? Wait, you're not Silvermane Guards? Well, why didn't you say so? Turns out we're on the same side after all. Pleasure to meet you. The name's Sampo Koski. Excellent. I'll remember the name. I never thought I'd run into friends from the same line of work out here in this frozen wasteland. <sighs> Business is bad these days, but... Fear not. Sampo Koski isn't interested in hoarding. There's more than enough treasure to go around, so let's get rich together. <laughs> Say, why don't we join forces? I have reliable intel the main strength of the Silvermane Guards is being deployed to the front line. This is a golden opportunity. Come now, friends. I can understand the mistrust, but there's no need for the charade. Then again, I know the rules. Vigilance is the name of the game in our profession. It's my fault for letting my enthusiasm and sincerity get the better of me. Anyway, a meeting like this has to have been written in the stars. Ask me anything you like. I won't skimp on the details. Still make it snappy. You're never more than ten feet from a Silvermane guard. You really don't know? The Silvermane Guards are Bellabog soldiers, enforcers, and police. Let's just say they're not the most flexible of people. And they like paying visits to folks in our line of work. Seems like you guys really are new to the business. <laughs> to be young and naive again. How about this? As a senior in the field, which I'm sure you don't mind me saying, I'll give you some free guidance. There are ways of doing things in this profession, and you better get familiar with them. Moving in the shadows, finding the goods, pricing your stock, hiding from the guards. There's an art to all of it. No need. Why don't you just take us to the city? We don't really know the way. The city? Already? They haven't even started trading yet. Well, showing you the way is easy enough, Missy, but... It would cost. But, but it would be my pleasure. Kindness is Sampo Koski's middle name. Follow me, friends, and uh, keep quiet. We don't want to be spotted by the guards. So why were you hiding from the Silvermane guards? Yeah, we're just storing a few relics away from prying eyes. Nothing serious. If it weren't for the uncompromising nature of our civil service, there'd be no need for secrecy. So where about you guys from, anyway? I don't mean to pry or anything. I just care about my friends. No pressure. Rule number seven, never leave a footprint. I have my own special technique called invisible snow walking. Helps me throw off pursuers in no, no time. Who are they? Uh, you remember the Silvermane guards I mentioned? That's them! Help me, old friends! I don't want to be caught! It's the suspect and his accomplices! Arrest them! It's now or never! 
first in combat. Over to you, dear friends. Hey, where do you think your manners, huh? Huh? Who invited you? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Fighting is meaningless. <laughs> Tough luck running into me. <laughs> Let's make it quick. <laughs> Depart Landau, captain of the Silver Main Guards, order you to relinquish your futile resistance. That Sampo cheated us all. Wait till I get my hands on him. Relinquish your resistance. Uh, so I'm a criminal, huh? Forget Sampo. Wait until I get my hands on you. Life and death revealed in an endless sanctuary. Is better vision. Everything is ordained by the stars. Oh, profound secrets of the stars! Give these trailblazers your blessing. <laughs> A gift from the stars. <laughs> You have the worst luck running into me. <sighs> Clemency? Never heard of it. A guest with no manners, huh? Who's the lucky one today? This ends here! I take more than that. And the prime suspect? The one with the blue hair? Apologies, Captain. We lost him during the pursuit. We can't find his footprints. <sighs> no matter. We have his accomplices. He'll be close by, plotting his next move. As in forever. I'm not trying to talk our way out of this, but... We're not friends with that scoundrel. Did you see how fast he ditched us? We rescued him from the snow out of the kindness of our hearts. We had no idea he might be using us to get past you. Are you really dumb enough to fall for his... I'm a captain, not an adjudication panel. As a Bellabog citizen, you have the right to defend yourself, but that can only take place under the scrutiny of the architects. Not now. Take them away. Photos? Ah, oh, you're a genius! Great idea! You've probably never seen what your planet looks like, right? I took this one! Behold! Yarilo 6! <laughs> you mean to say that this... white ball? That's here? <laughs> that's our home? How can that... Hmm. It is said that a long time ago, strange visitors from beyond the sky would visit us here. But that after the eternal freeze, the blizzards made passage impossible. And Bellabog would cease to witness such arrivals. But these people are... This decision is beyond us. If what they say is true, then only the Supreme Guardian may decide their fate. Our job is to present them before her. Nothing more. Outsiders, follow me. Bellabog lies beyond this blizzard.
Welcome to Bellabog, the city of preservation. That's because you're in Bellabog, the last bastion of humanity. Last bastion? <laughs> 700 years ago, monsters from beyond the sky set the world ablaze. The land was turned to scorched earth, with raging infernos and billowing towers of smoke stretching beyond the horizon. In the midst of the conflict, the eternal freeze descended without warning. Suddenly, sweeping winds brought blizzards which buried the invading legion. Bellabog was all that remained. The steadfast architects built this city. Under the protection of Klepoth, the preservation, Bellabog remains forever warm in the face of unrelenting cold. He sure saying some weird stuff. A marked change in tone. It sounds like he's quoting from a historical record. Uh-huh. So why is he telling us all this? You wanted to know. Uh, <laughs> we saw strange creatures outside the city. They must have come from a Terran corroded space. A fragmentum, correct? How do you... That's right. Out there in the blizzard, there are still many threats, including the monsters you saw. The Silver Main Guards are continuously engaged with the enemy, but I'm afraid the situation is bleak. After your meeting with the Supreme Guardian, I would like to consult you on this matter. We're lacking in intel. We're here. This is Klepoth Fort, the heart of Bellabog and headquarters of the Architects. The saviors of humanity. Long before the arrival of the Eternal Freeze, the Architects braved the doubts and derision of the people never wavering from their construction of its defenses. History has proven that their decision was the correct one. The architects named this fortress after Klepoth, Eon of Preservation. Under their direction, humanity has withstood external enemy attacks and held off the eternal freeze. Even today, we resist the Fragmentum's corrosion. This fortress is also the residence of the Supreme Guardian, the Supreme Guardian? The leader of Bellabog, elected and appointed by the Architects. The Supreme Guardians have watched over this city for generations, sheltering the people from harm. The current Guardian is Madame Kokolia Rand. Every major strategic decision is issued by her. Whoa, she sounds like a big deal. I will now bring you to see Madame Kokolia. Please have your words at the ready. Her time is precious, so she prefers concise communication. Uh, we're gonna see her right now? Can I at least find a place to freshen up first? Rest easy. The Madam Guardian doesn't care about formalities. Not to mention, you've only just arrived. It would be unexpected if you were familiar with Bellabog customs. I've dispatched a messenger to send word. Madame Kokolia will be aware of your arrival. Come with me. But that's a meaningless sacrifice. How can you... <clears throat> you may leave, Branya. Visitors have arrived. Ugh. Yes, Mother.
Madam Guardian, I have brought three outsiders to see you. The messenger informed me. Well done, Jepard. You may leave. Welcome, visitors from beyond the Eternal Freeze. Or perhaps I should say, from beyond the sky, no? <laughs> I am Kakolia Rand, Belabog's Supreme Guardian. I would be grateful if you could tell me why you have come. Do you wish me to doubt it? Or perhaps you're not confident in that identity yourself? <laughs> no, I do not doubt it. I can see that you are not from this world. The Architects remember the history well, else we should forget it. I know that in the distant past, before the Eternal Freeze descended or the Legion invaded, this world was once prosperous beyond measure. An eon connected our planet to other worlds, and we discovered the endless possibilities of the boundless universe. We also came to know of Klopoth, the Amber Lord. Under their attentive gaze, we built the city walls. So do not be surprised. For 700 years, the Architects have received no further communication from the stars. But I knew of your existence. Tell me why you have come. Uh, do you think anyone's gonna know what you're talking about? We came here for something known as a Stellaron. A Stellaron? Objects that fell from the blue on separate worlds. Their appearance spelled disaster. Many of the planets we visited have suffered their effects. You mentioned invasion by the Antimatter Legion. Soon after their arrival, this planet suffered the Eternal Freeze. At the same time, the phenomenon known as Fragmentum Space Corrosion began to occur. Correct? Correct. Which is why the Antimatter Legion and Stellarons often show up together. Worlds seeded with Stellarons give birth to Fragmentums. As for the Eternal Freeze, it must have been a product of the Stellaron, unique to the environment of your world. You can see us as... kind-hearted, interstellar public servants, lending a helping hand to any world affected by a Stellaron. <clears throat> your analysis of our current circumstances is clear. We have indeed suffered the disasters you speak of, some of which prove vexatious to us even today. But why should you care? Even if this Stellaron you speak of did bring about disaster, I fail to see its connection to you. I don't believe that anyone would go to such lengths to help a world unrelated to them, unless they had something to gain. You're right. Our reason for coming here is not purely selfless. If we don't seal the Stellaron, we cannot leave this planet. If we can get rid of it, your world will be safer too. You know how to seal the Stellaron. We have the relevant means. Very well, I believe you. If our present situation is truly the result of this so-called Stellaron, then your arrival is the hope that Bellabog has waited 700 years for. I am willing to assist you in any way possible to help you locate the Stellaron. <sighs> it's getting late, and you must be tired. I will arrange for you to stay in our most comfortable hotel. Rest there and get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow at noon, I will dispatch someone to escort you here and we can discuss this urgent matter in greater detail. <laughs> but of course! You are Bellabog's honored guests, and have the highest privileges afforded to you. I too need some time. 
I will go over our records for anything that may be connected to Stellarons. Please excuse me for not escorting you further. Of course, I understand. Do not worry. I have a way. It seems that the Supreme Guardian holds you in high regard. I have received orders that your movements are no longer to be restricted. You know, I didn't think things were gonna go that smoothly. <laughs> I'm afraid I still have duties to attend to. I must return to my post. I hope you enjoy your stay in Bellabog. Uh, wait! Can you recommend some sights? It's not that late. We want to take a look around. Well, I'd say that Golden Theater and the History Museum are both worth a look. However, you'd need a pass to get into the museum. I recommend you visit Everwinter Monument first. It's Bellabog's most symbolic landmark. And if you enjoy music, you could head to Neverwinter Workshop. You can sometimes catch an outdoor performance there. The artist is... <sighs> You'll see. Oh, and if you're staying at Goethe Hotel, please avoid the alley that runs next to it. The one with Silvermane Guards stationed there started to be affected by corrosion recently, so it's been sealed off. So the corrosion is inside the sea. Well, that's a grave situation. Yes, we're mounting a resistance as we speak. I must leave now. I hope all goes well for you. somehow whatever it's made of it can't be ice I guess you're right it's actually pretty warm in the city uh, hey what's with all the children over there should we go and take a look so let 
me introduce myself. I'm the intelligence officer for the Silvermane Guards, and a temporary guide for the A Journey Through Bellabug's History program. My name is Pelageya Sergeyevna, but you can call me Pela. Yes, Miss Pela! Okay, guys, take a look over here. This is Everwinter Monument. It was erected to commemorate the mighty architects. The architects are followers of the Eon Klopoth. It was they that foresaw crisis, built up our walls, and established Bellabog, preserving the spark of human civilization. Even today, they are still tending to the city. Everwinter Monument is made up of two parts, a gear that symbolizes knowledge and industrial strength, and huge ice crystals that symbolize the eternal freeze. These two symbols are bound together, the gear restricting the ice. It represents the unyielding spirit of the architects in the face of nature's barbarity. Any questions? Any questions? The monument is made up of two parts. A gear that symbolizes knowledge and industrial strength, and huge ice crystals that symbolize the eternal freeze. These two symbols are bound together, the gear restricting the ice. It represents the unyielding spirit of the architects in the face of nature's barbarity. You mean, what are they made of? It's Geomero that's undergone a change in color. The color of Geomero is related to the environmental temperature during its refinement. The architects are followers of the Eon Klopoth. It was they that foresaw the crisis, built up our walls, and established Bellabog, preserving the spark of human civilization. Or, to put it another way, the architects are Bellabog's founders and saviors. Even today, they are still tending to the city. That's a question for the Scientific Research Division, though they may not be able to give you a definitive answer. The Eternal Freeze is no ordinary natural disaster. Meteorological records from hundreds of years ago cannot explain the cause. To put it simply, it's a problem that has plagued Bellabog scientists for centuries. And what about you guys? Take your time. We're not in a rush. You know what I mean.
workshop. Hey, didn't Japard say there'd be a show here? He said you can sometimes catch an outdoor performance. Sometimes being the operative word. Ah, darn. I wanted to see one. Oh, I'd been wondering. You see that heater over there? Why do they keep it outdoors? This city is so weird. Normally you'd want a heater inside a building, right? If so, I'm not sure mighty is the right word for these architects. Tiny heaters are no use against the Stellaron disaster. <laughs> you guys sure have a lot to say about that broken heater. Yep, touch it and find out. Ice cold. I was just about to fix it up. I forgot to introduce myself. The name's Serval. I'm the owner of this workshop. If you got any broken equipment lying around, you can always come find me. Though I can't guarantee I'll be interested in fixing it. Oh, uh, we're okay. I was just curious about the heater. Curious? About the heater? It's just a standard Geomero radiator. You can find them anywhere in the administrative district. Only just got here? Ah, I figured it out. I heard a loudmouth guard say that a group of outsiders had met with Cocolia. You must be them? What an honor. Where are my manners? We can talk about heaters all day if you like. Let's have a chat. saw is just a standard Geomero radiator. They may not look like much, but they're a real lifeline to the people. The blizzards here are brutal. If we didn't have a reliable way of keeping warm, Bellabog would long since have become a dead city, both above and below the surface. It's an ore, a special energy resource. Whether it's keeping the city warm or keeping our counters ticking, everything runs on Geomero. Geomero grows beneath the surface of the planet, and specialist underworld mining teams are there to extract it. Transport lines shuttle it up to the surface. In the overworld, we use the same lines to ship surface goods and aid down to the underworld. You didn't know? Bellabog is structured like two big connected disks. The overworld is responsible for administration and trade, while the underworld is responsible for energy supply and resource extraction. However, due to an order that was given many years ago, nobody has moved between the overworld and the underworld in a long time. Ah, I shouldn't be talking about this. Pretend I never said anything. Isn't it just like cooking food over an open flame? If the house is a pot, then the heater is the stove it rests on. When she puts it like that, it actually starts to make sense. No sweat. This is your first time in Bellabog. I just want you to feel some of the warmth the city has to offer. Hey, seeing as there's nothing on your plate just now, want to help me fix up this machine? Just a bit of manual labor. You might find it interesting. Great. Then let me give you a demonstration first.
Nice. You guys are pretty handy. You picked that up in no time. Want to be my assistants? Average pay, but I'm a good boss. <laughs> Do you just say yes to everything? <laughs> I was only kidding. Just a joke. Well, I'd better carry on here. Why not have a better look around? My workshop will always be open to you. And your wallets, of course. that Japard mentioned. The one contaminated by the Fragmentum, right? I can't believe how close it is to the city center. If they hadn't identified it, I bet all the shops and hotels in the vicinity would have had to close down by now. Move back! This is your final warning! But... But my proof of property is inside! I don't have any... The Fragmentum has already corroded this block. You can make a property retrieval request to the Architects, but only Silvermane Guards are permitted to enter here. I can't believe Fragmentum Corrosion has spread into the city. No wonder there are so many soldiers stationed there. No. As long as the Stellaron is active, the Corrosion will continue to spread. The soldiers can only periodically clear the Fragmentum of Monsters. But the monsters will continue to emerge and multiply. Please try to understand, sir. Backwater Pass has become very dangerous. We're just here for your safety. If I can't get my proof of property, it doesn't matter how safe I am. Out of my way! Let me pass! <sighs>
weird. Huh. I just want to put my head on a pillow and drift off. <sighs> Seems like the first day of our trailblazing expeditions is always pretty eventful, huh, Don Hung? <laughs> it's because you've got too much energy. mattresses and cushiony pillows tonight. Want to have a pillow fight later? Huh? Huh? I bet they're stuffed with goose feathers. <laughs> March. Earlier in Klepoth Fort. Stop. I know what you're going to say. March, you said too much back there. March, you shouldn't reveal our goal to people we don't trust. Meanwhile, you guys were beating around the bush and speaking in riddles. But check it out. Seems like we landed with a pretty sweet deal, right? We get the royal treatment, rooms in a beautiful hotel, and the full support of the locals. As far as trailblazing goes, this is smooth as heck. That's... not what I was going to say. All right, spit it out then. Earlier in Klepoth Fort... <sighs> were you paying attention to the Supreme Guardian? Yeah, of course. This isn't my first expedition, you know. My powers of perception are sharper than the sharpest blade. Nope, she seemed normal to me. She was kind of harsh at first, but she turned out to be a nice, reasonable lady. Although, it felt like she was looking through me. As in, I know she was speaking to us, but it seemed like her gaze was fixed on something far away. Hmm, I had a similar feeling. Almost as if we weren't the only people in the room. Do you have to put it like that? That's scary! He'd get past Don Hung's sharp eyes. Perhaps I'm too sensitive. She did promise to help us. I just hope she keeps her word. Mm. Let's get some rest. We need to save our energy for the discussions tomorrow. Pretty nice, huh? Is there anything left to do? We're meeting the Guardian tomorrow. There won't be any time for sightseeing. It was a long day today. All I need is a hot shower and a good night's sleep. 
Well, don't talk about it then. Let's get to bed early and save our energy. I sense the next few days could be tiring. Well, I'm off to my room then. Express lights off! There's a group of Silvermane guards at the entrance, and I don't think they're here to say hi. Uh, if this is our escort, it's less friendly than I was expecting. I guess we'll have to find out. Let's go and meet them. We won't know until we're down there. Hey, Commander Branya is waiting for you all down below. Hurry up and go see her. And no tricks. Are we in a lot of trouble? Huh? It's you! You were there at the fort! I am Branya Rand, acting commander of the Silvermane Guards. In the name of the Amber Lord in the Highest, and under order of Supreme Guardian Kokolia Rand, I hereby arrest the suspected infiltrators under the charge of plotting to incite rebellion. As agent of the Supreme Guardian, I herewith temporarily strip you of your freedom of action and speech. When you are tried by the adjudication panel, you will be given the opportunity to defend yourselves against the accusations. Resistance will prove futile. You must come with me. This isn't what we agreed. She said we were going to be escorted to discuss an urgent matter. This is an orchestrated betrayal, obviously. Looks like we've been downgraded to accomplices. Again. It seems like it's every third planet this happens. 
That's because you always act without thinking. You never have a plan. Hey, I'm improving. I'm uh, coming up with a plan right now. And... Got one! Donna, the alley. The one that's been sealed off. Hmm, it's possible. March. Be ready to make an escape. Huh? Really? I just wanted to say something. Three of a kind? Shh! It's an old Astral Express escape signal. Do you play cards? Two pair? Hey, what are you whispering? Let's get going. Ace! abandon our pursuit just because they fled into a sealed off area I must ascertain their fate with my own eyes y yes ma'am eradicate all threats to Bellabog security that is what I must do Surprise. Nothing more. They'll be in pursuit soon enough. Mm. <laughs> Let's follow the path. We need to guarantee our own safety before making any further plans. <laughs> 